Assalamualaikum. Uh, today uh, we are going to present about uh, Muslim Islamic Institutions. And we are presenting to our uh, dear sir, Faham Ahmed Kamal. And our group member is Isaac M. Shamal sir. Shalom is a but uh, unfortunately she could not come from Chittagong. One is missing from our group. Pallavi Borua, she is here. Shaukat Hussain, Tanvir Aziz, and me, Kalul Shortar. So the presentation overview was uh, what is the SOX Act, why the SOX Act was uh, introduced, describe section 302 and section 404, advantage of SOX Act and the disadvantages. So first of all uh, what we got is the Servants Oxley Act or SOX Act is a US federal law that aims to protect investors by making corporate disclosure more reliable and accurate. This act has been established at 2002. It detect and prevent errors in the process cycle of financial reporting. The name of SOX Act, how, how, it, is, how it came, the act has been derived by the history of Enron Corporation, WorldCom, and Tyco International Fraud, an accounting scandal at early 2000. The formal name of the Act is Public Company Accounting Reform and Investor Protection Act. Paul Servants, and uh, uh, he was a senator, and Representative Michael Oxley, the two crucial lawmakers who drafted the legislation and got SOX enacted in 2002. By their name, this act, well known as Servants Oxley Act, or in short, SOX Act. So uh, this was the beginning, uh, what is SOX? Now we want to um, uh, give a short uh, history, why and how it actually came. The act was uh, came because of the major accounting scandal, such as uh, Enron, already already we said in previous slide. Enron and Worldcom, today called MCIA, that tricked investors and <coughs> inflated stock prices. That is why actually spearheaded by Senator Paul Sarpens and Representative Michael Oxley, the act was signed into law by President George W. Bush on July 30, 2002. So, uh, sir, may I request uh, another one from our to present, please? John? Thank you. And then of the presentation.
pass internal controls within a last 90 days. The documents are free for untrue statement or misleading omission. The document truthfully represents the company's financial health and position. The document must be a complied by a list of all definition and charts in internal controls and information on any fraud involving company employment. regarding the procedure, procedures of use for financial reporting. This statement should also assess the effectiveness of the internal controls and reporting procedure. Next is the accounting firm auditing the statement must also assess the internal <coughs> controls and reporting procedure as part of the audit process. Thank you, Dr. Uh, my name is Tanvi Aziz. I'm taking over from here. Uh, now we're talking about advantage of SOX Act. IT increased responsibility of government body of the company, therefore increased trust in the public. Investors benefited from across to more complete and reliable information and were able to base their investment analysis on more representative numbers. Protect investors in public company by elevating corporate responsibility and transparency. So you have to be crystal clear on that. It established penalties for corporate executives and both if found any mismanagement in financial issues. After uh, the implementation of Sabin's Oxley Act, financial crime and accounting fraud become much less whispered than before. It was uh, actually less than before. Uh, organizations, were uh, organizations were deterred from attempting to overstate key figures such as revenue and net income. The cost of getting caught by the United States Securities <coughs> and Exchange Commission, which short form is SCE, SCA, sorry, SEC, and have exceeded the potential benefits that could result from taking liabilities uh, with the way that financial documents were presented. Uh, so in short, we can say that in the advantages of SOS Act that increased investors' confidence, increased transparency, and improve internal control. Thank you. Now I will take over, please. Thank you. Hi, uh, I am Isaac Shamudya, ID 212-060-256. Uh, I am presenting from now on, Diesel Fitness of SOX Act. One major criticism of SOX is the cost that greater disclosure and internal control requirements poses on smaller firms seeking to raise public funds. A Colombian Law Review article surveillance Oxley's effect on small firms. What is the evidence? Uh, found a degree of support in the argument that SOX disproportionately affects, uh, affected smaller firms and decreased the number of initial public offerings, IPOs. A financial executive international study found net benefit to SOX. However, a net decrease in compliance cost and increased accuracy in financial statements. Overall, the cost of SOX, greater internal control and disclosure requirements balance with the benefit of greater financial statement accuracy in a matter of policy still subject to 
debate. Uh, there is another one. Some SOX guidelines enacted forced penalties on minimal violation like not signing financial statements, which may limit the executive talent pool. If future management employees do not wish to be liable for such actions and penalties. Thank you. Uh, this is the end of our presentation. We are doing managerial accounting and today our presentation topic is about SOX. SOX it stands for uh, Service Oxley Act. Let me introduce our group members. First of all, myself, Akhikur Rahman, then Ms. Tamanna, then Mr. Dubai, Mr. Bisha, Mr. Jaman and Mr. Imran. What will, be, what will be the topic we are going to cover today is uh, first of all, what is SOX Act? Then next part will be why the Act was created, and the third part will be section. There, will, uh, there was eleven section in SOX, but today, today we are going to cover only two section, three zero two and four zero four, and the last part will be advantage and disadvantage of SOX. Okay, the first part. What is SOX? SOX Act is a federal law that has been established. Fin uh, established a wide range auditing and financial regulation. Uh, financial regulation. The lawmaker created this law in 21st century, and this has been enforced by SEC, Security and Exchange Commission. And the last part of the uh, what is SOX is SOX is uh, uh, created to protect shareholder, employee, public, uh, public from accounting error and avoiding cheating on financial. <coughs> practice. The next part will be presented by Mr. Jubayev. Uh, what is why SOX created? Assalamu alaikum, I am Jubayev and my part is why the SOX was created. This act is set for <laughs> improve the reliability of companies and financial reporting as well as uh, investor confidence and the rise of uh, corporate crime. St. Paul, Sarabens and Michael Oxley and former USA President George W. Bush who signed the act into law at 30 July 2008. Thank you. Next part. Assalamu sir. Assalamu alaikum to all. Thank you sir for giving me a chance to say something about my presentation. Uh, I am Khandukar Janathan Nahar, uh, 11 match MBA, BBA holder. My ID number is 2201006. Today our topic is SOX Act. Already discussed uh, about, this, um, about this topic, uh, my group members. 
but uh, yet uh, I have also adding some um, adding some point about socks. Socks is an act. Socks is an act uh, that uh, that established a financial regulation of statements. Here, servants and Oxley, mainly two persons, uh, former, was named for its uh, sponsors, and these act signed into uh, into a law by uh, President George W. Bush, uh, dated on 30 July 2002, and uh, this act mainly formed. Uh, due to a corporate scandal, uh, and this scandal directly involved to um, uh, Enron Corporation, and uh, Enron Corporation is, was considered as the most, um, uh, what can I say, uh, innovative, uh, you know, uh, innovative companies in the United States. However, this uh, this act mainly focus on uh, increasing punishment, uh, uh, in, increasing punishment. Um, punishment, increasing punishment, no, increasing punishment, uh, I just forget the line, and um, accounting regulation and um, corporate responsibility. Now I am going to uh, start my main uh, section uh, 302. Here uh, we can see that the uh, CEO and CFO mainly review the financial statements and signed it and after that this report obviously presented as fairly and this report must be um, that does not contain any untrue statement here and the CEO and CFO obviously responsible for internal accounting control and this report here in and financial disclosure report uh, obviously uh, included here and the financial release must contain reporting material changes in financial conditions. That's all about my presentation from uh, from from my side, and the next uh, slide will describe our another member, Visha. Please come. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum, everybody. My name is Nilder Visha. Uh, my ID name two zero one two two one zero six double zero four eight. My presentation. Uh, part of section 404 uh, assessment of internal control management company published details about their internal accounting control uh, produce uh, procedures of financial reporting as part of their annual financial report certified individual who liable if the security exchange finds violation my next presentation partner, John. Assalamu alaikum. Good afternoon. I am Jaman Ilvanidas, BBA Gordon. My ID name 2210601. Today's my topics Advantage of Socks. It was called Surveillance Oxley Act. First of all, the point number one is the to improve the financial business according to the strong control. Second of all, to improve the standardizing process. And third, to uh, improving the documentation uh, for uh, creating board, creating board oversight. And fourth point is to increase the investor, to increase the investor confidence. Thank you, sir. Next calendar is Imran. Assalamu alaikum. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Imran Atal Pro and my story ID is Tamoto 1060071. And I would like to share my topic, disabilities of source. Uh, many security failed new regulation due to dishonest and negligent act of few others. Uh, the law hybrid completion and business growth take too much executive, executive time, complaints cause that would highly excessive uh, amount of money. It was already burdened. So thank you.
Now a little question. The first point is these are not equal. What's the first point? Many executives fail new regulations due to dishonest and what does that mean? Number one. Many executives felt new regulations due to dishonest and negligent uh, act of few others. Yes, thank you. In that time, two person, two person in two person, the 
U.S. Senator Paul Sarbanes and the Congressman Michael J. Oxley able to innovate, able to then uh, able to pass in the oil structure guideline for the stock actions commission. In this act, in, in this act, they actually find how to protect the, the stock actions market, and they find that they and the, after uh, under this regulatory issue, they they innovated and they developed eleven rules and regulation for the stock for the stock action market. Under this stock uh, this regulation, we are selected and we are advised to discuss over the main two two. Two, two sections. We have we will discuss about the major two sections: uh, front of use and our members will mm -hmm. discuss as well on front of use. Hope they will better describe and they have better details about the section 202 and the 404 of the SOX Act. Actually, I have to first uh, then in my part I also want to say I want to say this act actually is made it to protect their investors. SOX Act is the came from the servant auction is the Paul Servant and the Senator and Senator Prince Servant and the Senator and the Senator Michael D. Oxley. This is the come short from in the, the, the SOX Act. And this act is made for the, the investor protection because of their think that how to protect their investor and how to save their money in the share market. This is, so, uh, the, uh, this is the main intention. And uh, in our next to close this, our, uh, our partners will say about the 302, the, how it will be just, uh, protected for the investors and uh, what is the punishment against this act. In this act has the details. And now I would like to instruct uh, Simon for his presentation and carry on this. Thank you. Good afternoon. Sir, thank you for giving me the opportunity to uh, share the section 302. There is scroll. I'm helping you. Thank you. This is the section 302. 302. There, uh, there is total four uh, in delicate point in this uh, section. First point is uh, uh, I understand that the uh, CFO and uh, a manager and who was the top management leader? He is the actually main indicator at this point, and he do, uh, he must be a signature of the report. Second thing is uh, fair fairly present in all material and respect the financial condition. This report always should be fairly. There is no unclear report and there is no doubt. If there is doubt, their uh, CFO and the top management should be responsible for this report. Result of the operation of the issue. At the plan, uh, incorrect, no, no, in, incorrect at the subject to criminal plans. plans. If there is any kind of problem, uh, any kind of doubt, uh, this report, this top management and the higher position who are uh, responsible this report is the punish for the government for US uh, top exchange. This is my uh, topic, and here our next participant is Pahimba is coming. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Alman Kian, I belong to 2106 um, Section 424, recall, recall, requires the management, requires the management and audits, establish inter internal control reporting, um, uh, reporting method to ensure the best uses of these controls, easily accessible, Easily accessible and control to each and every element of audit content. That's it. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Muhammad Shakib Islam. I am an MBA BBA holder. My ID is W2106014. My topic is for. Uh, Advantages of SOX. <coughs> is uh, many uh, advantages of SOX. One uh, corporate uh, responsibility, increase uh, criminal punishment, uh, accounting regulation, and new protections. And uh, then uh, disadvantages. <coughs> uh, 
the servants of uh, of the acts of uh, 2002 is a uh, complex and lengthy stretch of manipulation. <coughs> it is a costly auditing process, and uh, many workforce are uh, required for this audit report making. And this is all for us. If, please, if you have any question, you may write them. We are ready to answer. Was there a criminal criminal offense or is it a civil actually, offense? Actually, maybe there is missing and it's a civil offense will be and is it criminal offense or punishment? Is it criminal punishment or civil punishment? It's civil punishment. Share about it. So it's a criminal. Yeah. It's a criminal. Yeah. Yeah. It's a criminal. Yeah. It's a crime. It's, it's, it's both. It's kind of it's both. both. What's the difference between criminal and civil punishment? Not clear about the law. <laughs> civil punishment, you will just have to pay compensation. Like if you violate uh, traffic rules, that's a civil punishment. You have to pay a compensation. But in criminal, you are going to jail. Both of it is applicable for this law. Criminal and civil is both. You get, you have to pay a compensation plus you might have to go to the jail as well. Yes. And that is the law. We read that in our present, uh, when we made our presentation, they have the 5 million to 10 million cash punishment is happening. This uh, occurrence and as well as the five years to two year two years to five years is jail is civil and criminal civil and criminal, criminal, and criminal okay. punishment is available for this okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, nice. Thank you. Okay, is anybody have need this? Okay. Yeah.
Before I uh, start, I would like to thank our course instructor for giving us the opportunity to present this presentation in front of you all. Before I start, I would like also like to acknowledge you all that three of our group members is not present today, and due to the that our presentation features is just changed, so I may block in some places. So if you have any question, you can ask me. I, I will try to answer those. Thank you. Now I am uh, starting our presentation. So basically, uh, today what we are going to uh, discuss, uh, we are going to discuss about the Sarvins Oxley Act law. So basically, first uh, we will discuss about the origin of our uh, survey of the Act. Uh, our uh, one of our classmates, Ms. Tamalna, she uh, imposed it very, uh, very clearly and nicely that uh, survey and Oxley. Basically, these these two are two two different individuals. Basically, they basically invented this law, and United States of America government basically imposed those law to all the publicly traded companies. So this act is basically introduced on 13 June 2002 by US government. And that's all from this part. And another part that I miss, like why this act is imposed. Basically this act was imposed. Imposed only because organization like Enron and other companies with a big size like those are uh, 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 those are related with different foreign activities and they are not showing their financial statement in a manner or in a or we can say in a fraudulent manner so that the investor who investing in their companies are not getting the proper information and due to that basically this all law is origin and imposed on 2002 now I would like to uh, invite my another group member Ms. Afifa Akhtar for present his part of presentation. Thank you. Hello everyone, this is Kaji Afifa Akhtar. Uh, I am from uh, PBA Holder. PBA. Yes, uh, she, she's a PBA Holder and now doing his MBA. His ID number is 2010 so, right now I am going to present the uh, advantage of uh, this 
So advantage is at all times. Crucial information can be withheld from uh, shareholders and the need for internal controls is wider. And uh, as follows, the uh, disadvantage is sometimes smaller companies feel the burden and then uh, audit fees are increased. And that's all from her part. Now I would like to carry from uh, now. So uh, why is SOX Act is important? SOX Act is important and why it's important it is, uh, I think I cleared it on my first part on my origin part, due to the fraudulent activities of those companies. Those companies means not the private companies, that means the public traded companies who have shares on the share market and people are investing on their part. So what are the uh, SOX Act, why it's important? It's important because it's proven data manipulation. We know what is manipulation is. People are doing manipulated. We sell 10 pieces, but we are we are showing like we are we are selling 12 pieces of something. So to prevent that type of manipulation, uh, SOX Act is implemented. Then we can ensure timely reporting of financial changes. So this part is very important. We know finance is the heart of a company after marketing. So in case if there is any changes occurred in any part of our year and those flag if are not raised, then uh, a financial crisis may occur, which happened. So that is what is, is, is saying, uh, ensure timely reporting of financial changes. As an example, I say like, uh, many of us are uh, working in a corporate arena and we have reporting system. We have weekly reporting system, we have daily reporting system. Why do we have it? We have those reporting system. We have those reporting system only because if there is any crisis arise, so that we can take necessary and immediate action. So, SOX ensure that. Create effective financial and data controls. So this part is another very important thing. Create effective financial and data controls. What that means? So SOX Act is an act. Before SOX Act, people have chance to do manipulation. But after the SOX and due to its rules and its regulations and due to the fines and due to the afraid of the fines, people are now showing the exact data that is made. Promote transparency among, among corporations. There was a lack of transparency among the corporations, which was uh, what I can say, which was uh, declined due to the SOX Act and its fine system and rules and regulation. Now, promote transparency. Okay. Require regular monitoring of the security and accuracy of final financial safeguard used by corporations. So before 2001 or before imposing the, imposing the SOX Act to the public traded companies in the United States of America, uh, people are showing their information at their will. So, but when the law is there, then the CEO, CEO for that means top level managers and top level management and the owners are being responsible for what they are providing or financial report is providing. And if there is any Anomaly fine, then they are they are having a very big amount of uh, what can I say fines. They they can even change due to this. So due to that, uh, what can I say? I mean, what a very boring list of police. So yeah. due to this, due to due to the, due to uh, due to those fairs, the uh, <laughs> that, uh, that the top management owners as well as the. Uh, as well as the uh, as well as the lower level employees, lower level means so the officers, the executives. Everyone is then. Shobai itar kiniye holo ke khubi holo ke mane itar kuch care kora shuru kora the jodi ami kono information ne care kuri, ba ami jodi kono misi information de, a jodi itar jono ono audit hoy, thale itar jono amar boss kintu dai hobe na. Tor faste dai hobo ami, tar pora amar boss dai hobe. So from that point of view, thikhe. So, we should have information to input kora shuru kora. Now, the act consists of many parts. Uh, as, as you know, uh, SOX Act is basically 
Uh, it's, uh, there is 11 section and now we will discuss two section of those. Uh, one is 302 and in my next slide you will see 404. So what is exactly section 302? There is a very common part between 302 and 404. Both of, for, both the, yeah, for both the sections, CEO and CFO are responsible. But why they are giving money? Why we are reading it in separate, separate sections? Anyone have any idea? Or any clue? Can anyone answer? Except sir. Okay. The main difference between section 302 I think the difference because of one is documentation part and another is direct imposed to the persons. Exactly. This is one of the difference. So what is the difference? The difference is in TO2, TO2 basically imposes internal control. Internal control bulta ma ki buchi? Internal control bulta ma buchi? Je, we organization it. Bitter data flow gula hoche. Sorry. English please. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, basically, uh, English please. Uh, where, where I was? The data flow. Internet. Oh, that, where, yes. Uh, the, the, the data flow. So, basically, to uh, control, to have a big, uh, very better internal control, uh, basically, section 302 is used. It is used, you know, like in all levels of the executive, like Officers, finance and accounts is responsible for profit and loss account. Officer, uh, uh, say accounts is responsible for final account, and all but the, the another person is responsible for cash flow. Each and every one, uh, each and every person is responsible for some different, some different options. So people are basically providing their information or not on time or differently or not. So this part of there, the CEO. CEO and CFO is responsible for the financial statements. They are responsible for establishing and maintaining internal control. That is what I was talking about. Then certify the financial statements are materially correct. Who, who is going to certify? Anyone? Yes. From that certification, he is also being responsible for that financial statement. Now, Provide certification by a written statement which includes all the financials. Who is responsible again? Is the CEO or CFO is preparing the report or not? Who is preparing? But he is responsible. So when there is a responsibility, so there is an action come with the SOX Act. The another, the, uh, after saying the 404 Act, the next slide. Uh, what is section 404? of the service of the act. So here is also CEO and CFO is responsible. Responsible for what? The basic difference between there and here is the internal control. There CEO and CFO or the top management are responsible for the internal controls. Which internal control? The financial parts statements, cash flow statement, journal, laser, uh, then all others cash flow statement, these are for the responsible. But here, after preparing the report, this CEO and CFO under section 404 have to give a written documentation to the external auditor that they know this is the thing and they are responsible for it. There is no problem. So this is the main thing. So we are going to do this. Providing assessment of effectiveness of internal controls. Provide statement that they are responsible for the internal controls. Provide assessments in a written format which includes the financials. Then audit the company's statement by an external auditor or audit fund. That is the main part. The difference between the organization. Sorry. Uh, between the section. Now, what are our key takeaways? Like, uh, we basically talk about the company, uh, the sections, the advantages, and also as well as the disadvantages. So basically, uh, this was my part. So what are the things that we are going to take away from this presentation or from this SOX Act? This SOX Act, basically we divided it into two points of view. From investor point of view, what is SOX is doing, and 
from company point of view, what is their view? The first part is we are going to from investors point of view. Sorry. So as I said, the, this law is implemented, introduced on 2002 by the US government. Why we implement it? We implement it to ensure to ensure what? What we are going to ensure in case of investors, what we have to ensure? Anyone? No idea. Okay. So basically, this law, what we basically are uh, within this law, the American government tried to ensure the transparency among the investors. Transparency related what? Transparency related the documentation that they are doing. Then ensure financial safety as well as regain, sorry, regain investors' faith. This is the main part. That is why the 2002, in 2002, US government basically implement this SOX Act to regain the investor faith again. Now, from a company point of view, ensure like. As you all know that, that Asia, this SOX Act has many sections as well as many rules and regulations as well as many fines as well. And due to these rules and regulations and implementations of those, this SOX Act law is uh, globally recognized and being practiced. So from that part, you can say that uh, company from company point of view, it ensures better internal control. How? Because daily, uh, as CEO, CEO for or the top management is responsible, so they are creating pressure to their subordinates that do it on accurate basis or as per their say. So from that often, it, it, uh, company's internal control is developed. Then make top management responsible for the financial statements. So before 2002 or before the date of 30, this act wasn't on that much. Like if there is any fraudulent activities in the financial activities, stock management are being released from that because nobody can arrest them or give them any punishment. But after the SOX Act, now they are under control. Make top management responsible for the financial statements. After that, ensure timely reporting of the financial changes. When SOX Act is uh, demonstrated or effective in an organization or a public limited organization, they, they have to comply with the SOX Act. And those companies who are compliant with the SOX Act have literally or have to ensure the time, uh, timely reporting of the financial control. After that, we have ensure transparency in all the levels of a company. So, that is project. Uh, so lastly, last but not the least, due to this act, due to this act, fraudulent activities of the companies are uh, decreased in a high, uh, decreased in a uh, high percentage, and as a result, investors all around the world regain their faith on the publicly traded companies, and they again start to invest in the public limited company due to this SOX Act. And that's all from our part. Okay. If anyone have any questions, you can ask. Thank Sorry. You. Okay, all good. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Hello. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum. I'm I'm Indigal Mitchell, MBA, Canvas. Uh, welcome to our presentation. Uh, our topics: Sharpen, uh, Oxley Act, 